a little bit about uh, your terroir and your soil? And I know that Lude has a very specific terroir, which is very sandy. Um, how does that affect your grape growing and your wines? Well, just coming back to the global uh, terroir, is Lude is based, located in this zone that we call Montagne de Reims. And the very specific aspect of that lude is the exposure first of the, of the, of the vineyard. This is a north facing slope. So north facing slope for Australia is okay, uh, but north facing slope for, for northern hemisphere is not very usual. Most of the people here are looking for south facing slope to get more sun, more exposure. Historically, Lude and, and the few villages around are um, north facing, which means cooler climate, slightly, um, slightly higher acidity in the, in, the, in the wines as well. Um, I think you guys talked with Etienne Calsac recently? Yes, we did. Um, so Etienne Calsac is, is um, Côte des Blancs, uh, completely different exposure. And if you go just like above the hill, um, this will be a south facing slope around Epernay. And we can have here up to a week later picking date. So this is a huge time just for champagne. So cooler climate, higher acidity. As you were mentioning, the second very great fact about Lude is the kind of soil that we have. And this is usually what we call clay and limestone, but the chance that we have in Lude is we have a huge percentage of sand mixed with the clay, up to 55% in, in some of the vineyards, which makes it a very soft, very friable, and very free draining soil. So the water, when it rains, really goes down really quickly. And this specific layer of clay and sand is roughly around 40 to 50 centimeter thick. And then we have the limestone. And this kind of soil is very good for, uh, to produce super clean, super elegant, and very fresh style of Meunier. Mm -hmm. That's why we have a lot of Meunier in Lude and, and just the village, village next door. Roughly, the, the breakdown that we have at our winery is 40% Meunier, 40% Pinot Noir and 20% Chardonnay. Okay, yep, wonderful. And, and this is actually exactly what you are drinking right now. In yes. um, Invitation, uh, invitation this, this first wine, which is our non-vintage wine, uh, or we should call it actually multi-vintage, as, mm -hmm. as it is a blend of many, many years. I want this wine to be I like a postcard of the house. And uh, I like when I blend it to respect in this wine what's planted in the vineyard. So it really gives you all the different vineyards, the same breakdown of variety, and it really gives you the spirit of what we do. Hmm. It's beautiful. It's, it's got a really, really wonderful, you can tell that it's majority Pinot you know, on, on the palate. It's, it's got hmm. um, beautiful mouthfeel, beautiful presence, and um, amazing persistence. Lots of beautiful juby red fruits. I love it. The, it. Well, yeah, you describe it pretty well. Actually, <laughs> it's uh, it's um, it's lovely. One of the main thing that we believe with my brother is <clears throat> um, that our job as as a champagne grower is to produce champagne with a very strong identity. I, I want you to understand that we are not a brand. We are not communicating about brand, about a specific kind of label. Our goal is to express into our wine what we feel and what we have in the vineyard. And in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm not even saying, you know, that there is a war or uh, difficulties between brand and grower champagne. This is definitely not what I'm saying. Um, but I think the very deep and very precise knowledge we have about each vineyard, about each slope, about each grape, we want it to, to we want you to understand that through our wines. And we, we see ourselves as people who are producing champagne for the people who know champagne already and wants to go further. 
because this is, this is just another option. And what really matters for me is that champagne is all about wine first. We don't really care about, about bubbles and pressure. There are bubbles and pressure because we're in France and we love rules in France, but we, um, my job as a winemaker is to make the best wine as possible before bottling. And then this will go through second fermentation and, 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 and pressure and blah, blah, blah. But the deal is showing this very small part of champagne, which is lewd and, and a few villages around, and that shows this freshness. But as you were exactly ex ex explaining, this nice, rich, sweet fruit, in the mid palette coming from Meunier and Pinot Noir on clay and sand that gives this very generous, very, um, very appealing kind of, of, um, of wine. 